Cool. So we're going to call uh, this is the City Council so the Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commission. The date is October 11th, 2022. This meeting is starting now at 7.33 and we, we hold through teleconference. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. Beth. Javier. Here. Camilla. Here. Gwen. Not yet. Uh, Jana. Here. <clears throat> Eric. Here. Susan. Not yet. And Cynthia. Uh, here. Excellent. Habemos quorum and meeting. Uh, so this meeting is gonna is it's uh, video video and audio recorded, and it's been held over Zoom as we said. And we welcome everybody who is not part of the committee. Um, and we're gonna move to public comments. The first agenda item that we have is public comment. Please feel free to use the raise hand feature if you go. Uh, to your Zoom screen in the bottom, it says reactions. If you click there, the raise hand feature it's, uh, is there, so you just select it. If you are having trouble doing that, feel free to uh, turn on your camera and raise your physical hand and I will call you. So uh, we're going to have public comment right now and I'm going to wait for if people come in and they, they want to sort of do public comment. And Beth, I, I want to sort of add that uh, Mara, Susan just came in. I, I noted that. Thank you. And Javier, I'm sorry if I missed. Did you put a limit on the amount of time for public comment? Uh, we had 15 minutes, um, depending on the, of the amount of people would be two or three minutes per person. Per person. OK. I'm hoping that we can agree well, one of the things that we're going to talk is about outreach and that outreach also it's about maybe holding uh, a public comment meeting, only public comment. But that's sort of in the future. That's a problem of future Javier, future Jamila, future Cynthia, future Gary, not for present us. Again, if somebody uh, wants to use this time for public speaking, because we don't have a lot of people, you would get three minutes. Uh, we are, uh, we try to be really thorough. So at the beginning of every single meeting so far, I don't think we have had a meeting without public comment at the beginning, which uh, intentionally we do it to allow the opportunity to get members of the community to, to talk to us uh based on the charts that we had based on what and what they want to say in their own experience because we're highly interested in hearing from the community we're going to wait one more minute and if there is no takers from for the comment we're going to move forward um i'm going to copy paste uh for everybody um uh, attendees and members the link to the agenda for today. Uh, it is amended. Um, it was amended uh, from 7 to 7.30, as we said. Um, so I just sent it to everybody on the public chat so everybody can see it if you wanna sort of follow the, the meeting and see what we're gonna be talking today. Um, excellent. So we're going to close um, public comment and we're going to move to the approval of previous meetings, the minutes of previous meeting. Uh, was everybody was able to take a look to the minutes? Jenna, I saw that this is like two weeks ago, but I think you had some, some, some uh, comments about the one of the minutes. 
Was that address? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I ever heard back from Beth and I don't, don't think I saw new minutes unless I missed them. I did see your comment and then I went on vacation and I guess I didn't respond, um, but I didn't have time to change them. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna table uh, the minutes again. Well, um, there were three sets of minutes that were, sorry to interrupt, but there were three sets of minutes shared and I had just a small comment on one of them. So we could probably approve the other two if people looked at them and my change was very small. If, if if that's so I could describe it. Do. Yes, I would. Um, let me pull up my email here. I move to approve the minutes of August 8th and August 16th. August 8th or August 5th? August 5th. Thank you. A second. Oh, perfect. Beth? Um, do we want to do a separate call for each of them? Uh, we can do it together. Okay. Uh, Javier? Yeah. Jamila? Yes. Gwen is not here. Um, Jana? Yes. Garrick? Yes. Mara? Yes. Cynthia. Yes. So that's both uh, the 5th and the 16th. Yeah. So next batch of minutes would be the minutes that we have been approved and the minutes from today's meeting. Is that correct, Beth? Um, uh, Gina, which ones were the, which ones did you have the comment on? The September 13th yeah. um, minutes, would you like me to uh, resend my email to you so it's easy to find? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, I'll do that now. Thank you. Cool. So then the, um, the meeting of the subcommittee that's not called a subcommittee, um, that was on the 26th, I believe, right? And that, yeah. I haven't sent those out yet. So in the next batch, we should get those the ones for that genomic comments and this one, right? 913, 926, yep. and then today's. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So we're going to table the past two, the one that we did a high and smaller uh, select committee meeting, which was worshiping the documents that are coming to terms what we needed to do in today's are going to be approved in the next meeting, which is in two more weeks. Um, you know, if we're able to do it uh, at this point, I'm so like, you know, we're going to have it, hopefully. Uh, cool. We're going to move to the next agenda item, which is uh, work for workshop of documents. So we met uh, a smaller subset of this group met with enough quorum, so we didn't have to create a new group, but we were still being able to meet sort of in between weeks to be able to talk how to we move forward with the form. Um, Jenna, Cynthia, and Gwen um, sent their, everybody has this in their, even if you're winning that meeting or not, everyone here has uh, their version or there are the different approaches to, to the four, including the first one that I did. Um, because of life, because of things are incredibly crazy, at least for me, um, that besides doing my work right now, I'm the deputy field director for yes and four, drive a license for undocumented folks. Yes. Um, we were not able to meet with Jamila until today, but epiphany strike stroke. So let me show you what I mean. So one of the main concerns that I had, let me look the, the document here. So one of the main uh, concerns that I have, it's the documents that were prepared by Jenna Cynthia and Wen were really good. Really, really good. So when we met with Jamila to talk about those documents, um, we used sort of the guidance that 
Jenna drafted with the commonalities in the overlapping questions. So uh, let me move this here. Can you see the untitled form that has only three options? So what we're, what we came to terms with Jamila is that, so we sort of debrief the meeting that we had with everybody and we do, we still agree that having a mega large form with having sections to people that aren't, is not going to be relevant to them is sort of, it's, it's going to be, it's going to discourage people to do it, right? I'm an absolute ignorant using Google Forms, but with Jamila, and, and I'm sorry if, if any of you guys are really good in Google Forms, but for me, I have never used Google Forms, so I don't really care about it. But what, what we came uh, to the site was that we're going to start with different, you know, this is going to be a, a, a breached form. So at the beginning, the only thing that people are going to get, it's are you a chair or co-chair, acting or former member of a committee, applicant not appointed, somebody who applied. So immediately we are addressing the three subjects that we were talking during the meeting, right? So each of this is going to have a timeline in, in, a, in a line of questions that is going to be independent. They are going to be overlaps of questions. Some questions are going to, are going to be more than one, uh, one question for a chair or co-chair, it's going to overlap with the acting of former member of a committee. But the reality is that none of these people are going to see questions that are not relevant or pertinent to what they do. In this way, uh, pretty much we're going to be able to, we're, we're not going to have to cut any question. In fact, this, this way allow us to be able to be pretty concise with what we needed and with the different styles of form or forms that everybody was proposing with the questions. Any questions so far? Cool. So um, Jamila today um, clustered, so she created three different sets of, of questions. She talked everything that was written by you guys. And Jamila, do you want to explain that? I don't want to explain it, sorry. Yeah, I just took the questions that you guys created and I put them um, in each category. And then with each one, I added, you know, those questions plus the questions for the new category, like for co-chair or chair, you would have all the questions above plus the chair questions that, um, that were on the forms. So the good thing about this is that, as I said, allow us to, um, that people are gonna be able to fill out this without running into anything that they don't need to run into, right? Uh, which was one of the big uh, discussions that we have. So, uh, so far, what we have been able to do, if somebody selects chair and co-chair and they move forward, they would have a specific questions about, about that targeted exclusively to that person. If somebody is going to do acting a former, they would follow a different set of questions, right? So in that way, first, I like it because in that way, we can be really thorough with the questions that were drafted with are extremely good. We don't have to get rid of anything. There are going to be one or two questions that with Jamila, we thought would be sort of good to, to cluster together because they get to the same point. So those ones, uh, it was really helpful, Jenna, having the, the overlapping sheet that you share with us. So this is where this is going, and I'm pretty confident we're going to have it done um, before Friday. Um, any questions, suggestions? May, for me, this was an epiphany because I didn't know how the hell to use uh, this thing, but Cynthia. Yeah, uh, nice work, everyone. And um, just a question on the three top choices. Um, what is an acting member of a committee? Does that mean? Sorry, Cynthia, that was me. I don't know why. OK. Um, again, thank you very much um, for the work. And I just need to ask, what is an acting 
member of a committee, that means a current yeah. member of a committee. Do, do you think we might want to change that to current just because acting sounds like you are acting in place of someone else? Um, just a suggestion. And um, are you good? Um, I noticed I, did, I noticed when I looked at the list that somebody gave us the city clerk about all the memberships, prerequisites, et cetera, that there is only one committee that says one, one person on this committee must own or reside in the district. So it, it raises my question, does one have to be a resident to be on a city committee, subcommittee, commission, whatever? And if so, do we, or if not, should we ask that question or have you addressed that issue? I just don't know what the rule is about being a resident or a voter. I'm not sure what it is. So two things. The first one, it's uh, mo most of the committees that we have in our Hampton act in an advisory nature to the mayor, right? So the requirements to be able to be part of one of those advisory boards or commissions are up to the mayor. Um, I don't see any problem adding a residence, a residency question would be really easy. And that that's the kind of question that you put across the board. Um, if anybody has any other thoughts about it, I would like to hear it, but I don't think should, I mean, we can add it. I'm not advocating for it. It's just like, do we need to know maybe you're a worker, maybe you're a visit, maybe you're a temper. I, I don't know. Do we need to know that? So. So we talk about, so, so what I, I'm going to, I'm going to mention again, I, like I mentioned this in the last meeting. Um, the idea is it's after people are done filling out their path of the form, they are gonna have the option to fill out a, a really short form that asks for, uh, you know, if uh, you're rented an owner, do you live in Northampton, you don't live in Northampton, age range, uh, that kind of questions. I don't know if that addresses your concern. And the reason why we thought with Jamila not to have it embedded into the form was because in that way the personal non-personal identifiers can be sort of linked to to the answers to something else even more when we're entering into the like formerly appointed uh people formerly members i don't know if that would address what you're saying or do you if you think there is still sort of the value to be able to add it Julio. Jenna. Uh, I have two questions. The first is a structural question about how you're planning to build out the form. Um, I think it's great to have this branching set up. So as you said, sort of the different groups get the questions that are relevant specifically to them and they aren't bogged down by questions that don't apply to them. Um, I'm wondering, um, uh, so bear with me while I try to ask this in a clear way. The questions that are common to everybody, are you going to put them all on a separate page so that everybody's ultimately getting funneled there? I'm asking because I think on the receiving end, it will be easier for us if we have one set of answers to the common questions instead of three separate sets of answers that we then have to compile. So the way how I was thinking to do it is that the numbering of the, of the overlapping question is gonna be the same across the board. So let's say question four, five, and six are overlapping. So that's in it really matter where in the, in the branch tree you go, if you retrieve information for question four, nine, four five, and six, you're gonna get information across the board because it's the same question to different people. So you're still being able to gather it. So for example, if I have question number three as a yes or no question or multiple choice question, and I want that one to be repeated 
among the three different individuals, I keep that as a question number three. So after that, when I retrieve the data, I just look across the board, question number three, and I know that whatever that I get is the same question. So it's the same data and it can be measured in the same way, mm -hmm. right? Rather than being one number three multiple choice, one number three another track narrative, and one number three in a different different uh, a different option, right? Mm -hmm. But again, I do believe you guys know better than me, so I'm open to <laughs> I'm open to do whatever you. If you think there is a better way, first I believe you. Second, I would like to. Do. Uh, I'd have to play around with it. I've done a little bit more in Qualtrics than in Google Forms, but um, I hear what you're saying. I think that could work, but my I wonder if it will still require us to sort of manually add question three for the first set of people to question three for the second set of people and so forth and if there might be an easier way but i'll try to look into it and email you if i can figure it out because maybe we can anyway i'll look into it and yeah. get back to you and let me run a couple of tests in the way how i'm thinking to do it and i will let you know full of honesty if it just crashed and there or if it sort of worked yeah I mean, it sounds, I, I think what you're proposing will work regardless. I just, yeah. the easier, the, I like the idea that the data is really easy for us to use when we yeah. get it back. Um, cool. So my other question is just, will we have an opportunity to look at the questions again and the way that the form is branched in the phrasing in, in its entirety? Yes. Okay, great. Absolutely. Yeah. And the... The pseudo final version should get to you to you guys before next Monday. This this before, like at the end of this week, right? So then you would have you would be able to email me and Jamila and nobody else with every single comment that you have. Sort of you know I hate the font, better, better pink, not blue. I don't know what the hell do I know. But uh, yeah, so let's say the public comment is gonna be a week. And after that, in the next meeting, we should be coming with the final version of it. And that night getting it uh, off the ground. And just to let know everybody, so we are thinking with Jamila, uh, we're gonna be requesting for an extension of our charge. Uh, City Council President Nash uh, sort of mentioned uh, something like that to me the other day uh, because of uh, the couple of hiccups that we have experienced. Um, so um, I'm just putting that on the table. I know it's, it's not part of the agenda, but I just, just want to put it there. Excellent. Is there any other comment about the, I, I, I do feel that we're sort of heading in the right direction after a while. So this is, and this is, I feel that this is going to be more accessible of what, what, what we thought. And, and the beautiful is that we're not going to have to cut good questions or good phrasing of questions just for the sake of making it shorter. It's going to be concise by itself. Cool. So the next agenda item is assignments. And the reason why we thought about assignments, it's uh, we want to be able to, I mean, one of the proposals that we're going to bring to the table is to have listening sessions of this committee. And assignments means that we, we need, uh, I would like, we would like to gauge the, how busy people are if that would be possible for us to do. And, you know, we would, we would, we would have to promote it. Um, and I think that that sort of is going to require sort of specific tasks. Um, and I think we, I mean, I feel that we should sort of start talking about that now um, in relation to sort of level of commitment that we can make it happen. Um, and I want to sort of open the floor for people to, to, um, Jenna. What is a listening session? So a listening session, it's 
it's a, it's a subject to a meeting law so we would meet we would need the forum and would be only a session for people to come and talk to us we would be on the receiving listening end of it uh, a listening session can be a back and forth because of the nature of a listening session i may feel more comfortable having just people the community speaks and we listen because uh, uh sort of back and forth can depending on the context and circumstances it can go down like down south pretty quickly also a listening session would happen in, a, in not not during the regular meeting it would happen in a extremely accessible time right um usually the time that we meet uh if if i will if i were cursed with children i would think no way i'm coming back home i have to deal with my kids i'm not gonna go into a meeting to talk no 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 You're right I have a beautiful cat and I have the time to do it, right? So the idea is to be able to sort of to do it in a, in a, um, in a really accessible schedule. Garrick? Yeah, so my, my question is, who would we be targeting these listening sessions towards? I'm feeling like this, this seems like a more of a public thing uh, and less of a, current chairs and co-chair people correct okay that's correct this would be wide open to the community uh with that being said do we want to have a session with chairs and co-chairs if they feel comfortable or no i that's up to the group to decide okay. um i feel that our target audience that it's higher probability to filling out the form are the people that you just mentioned people that are chairs right so i feel that this would be geared towards sort of a demographic that maybe we're not necessarily reaching out with the form or uh they people you know people prefer rather than filling out the form they they, they want to sort of speak up um I don't know if that answers your question. Excellent. Uh, Jenna. Do you have your hand up? If not, uh, I, I have did, and then I sort of changed my mind. But um, uh, um, so uh, I guess a, a, a question for all of us would be, I mean, I, I clearly I had to ask what this was, so I'm not super familiar with this format, but if you're running a listening session, is it sort of like doing one of the forums live where you're prompting people with specific questions or you're just sort of passively receiving whatever it is that they have to say? Um, I'm asking that in part because it's taken us a while to sort of um, home in on the questions that we want to ask of the chairs and co-chairs and whether we're going to be asking questions live of people giving um, comment at these sessions or if we're just promoting the opportunity and inviting people to come and speak. I think either way we want to prompt people of here are the kinds of things that we want to know about. Um, so I guess I'd like to understand a little bit more about what the format of the meeting would be and then maybe start to think about what the timeline would be of coming up with those. What would our, Council Perry asked, you know, what's our target demographic, but also what's our target? What are the kinds of narratives we're interested in hearing? And how can we start to work toward developing those? Yeah, let's, let's go sort of step by step, right? Um, so the, the format, um, and you know, at, at the end of the day, this is a public speaking in, on asteroids. That's what it is, right? So the same public speaking that we had 50, uh, like we allocated 50 minutes for each meeting and we haven't had anybody, which from my point of view is not a good sign. It, the listening, a listening session is the same on asteroids. That's, that's one, right? So the dynamic is literally the same. In, in the public speaking, you do not talk back to people, you don't answer. And I do agree strongly that uh, in whatever communication, whatever thing goes out to the community, it should give really clear what it is and get examples of questions, right? 
And I think that as soon as we get out the, the form, we're going to see that some questions trigger more people's curiosity and triggers more people sort of desire to talk and to, 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 to talk about the issue. And I think we can pick it up of them. That's, that's one thing, right? Um, in relationship to the targeted demographic, when you do a community public speaking, <laughs> you do not have control of the demographic, right? And whoever wants comes because, you know, because we're at Cyber Tournament meeting, because everybody should, should be accessible, right? So uh, we may have people in from every walk of life. We would have people who uh, the first sentence that they say is related to the subject and two sentences later, they're talking about something totally different that is not relevant to us. Um, and, I, I, you know, that's that's sort of a wild card. And I think that the success or failure of a, of a public speaking event, it's mostly on the outreach, the, the communication that is done and the, the level sort of a putting the word on, out, out there for people to be able to come that are interested to be able to come. I don't know if those three things are I'm sort of uh, sort of address the three points that you you mentioned jenna i mean because uh, garrick knows really well that in pull the comment is a wild card uh jamila do you think we could put like a general um like a general question, like what do you think the barriers to serving on committees and commissions are? Like put out our charge as like the general question of the listening session and then just see what answers we get from that. Um, I would say that I would try to use a different language than, than the charge. Um, I would use sort of a more sort of accessible nonsense language to be able to promote this. Um, so we're studying X, Y, and Z. If you have an opinion, if you have an experience, if you have something to say about, you're invited. This meeting is going to be X, Y, and Z. Uh, and we can add sort of, you know, these are some of the questions that we're looking feedback from the community. Like uh, to, to do it, I mean, who, who knows? I mean, did you guys know before serving in your committees that there was a charge? Like committees have charge? No, nobody knew until they served in a committee. Nobody knew. So when we talk about let's tell the committee about our charge, they, you know, I don't think they would know that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I would sort of try it really simple, really direct, be really specific and, you know, and chirp widely. I mean, we can we can use radio. There are several radio shows in town that are pretty sort of good doing sort of reaching out to people. Uh, you know. Excellent. So it's um, probably one of the things that I was thinking is that um the, the the core planning is not gonna happen until november right uh because we wanna have at least a couple of weeks with the with the form out which doesn't mean that you know people cannot talk about you know foreshadowing what's coming um so um i don't know i i would like to hear the, like availability for people for towards the the end of November and sort of mid December. Jenna? Uh, I can say personally, that's a busy time for me and I question whether that's a good time. I just feel like the sort of holiday period between Thanksgiving and Christmas is a pretty busy time for a lot of folks. And I'm not sure, I mean, you, you spoke 
very aptly, I think, about trying to find a time that's accessible for a lot of people. And I'm just not sure that that's, if you're thinking of the event itself taking place in sort of mid-December, I that that timing concerns me a little bit in terms of if people will actually have the time and energy to come out during that time. Um, I don't know about other people, but I, that I, I have some concerns about that. I would like to hear from more folks. Cynthia. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we had, the city has experience doing this with both the ARP money and I think the Main Street um, revitalization, those, those kind of things that where we tried to get input so I'm, I'm not sure who organized those or not but the input was a, a range of things from contact this person or go to this zoom or you know so we we have a, a lot of other vehicles that we can do besides the meeting but I just want to keep those in view Facebook page etc so that's all about getting the word out that that City councilors know that, you know, some what happens at city council is an agenda, but then individual residents contact your city councilor. And they give them all kinds of um, suggestions and, and um, narratives about their issues. So we wanna make that available as well. But I would, in terms of timing, agree with Jana that um, it's not about my time personally, but I just think um, my biggest fear, I'll just put it out there, is that we throw this party and nobody comes. Um, that's my biggest fear. And so what do we do? You know, I, I, I don't want to jump the gun here, but I think we've got to just really make a good attempt from all different vehicles of communication to do this quote unquote listening. Um, and that can just be a simple email from a, from a, a constituent resident, whatever, to any one of us. And that be, that, that's a data point, right? Um, as long with the all of the other data points that we're going to get from the forum. So, um, so yeah, I, 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 you know, we're, we need an extension. Uh, December is just a tough month um, for people. So just want to be realistic about that. Perfect. Jenna? Um, so I'm wondering, uh, I, I really uh, appreciate what Cynthia just said about that there are some examples of this having happened really widely, like the Main Street redesign um, forums have happened. There's been a bunch of them and they've been extremely well attended. I think that's a part of that is just it's such a obviously kind of visible project. Um, but yes, thinking about what other experiences has the city had getting people to show up for these parties um, and how can we kind of piggyback on the same ideas. Um, I'm wondering, given, um, given our experience working on this form, um, that it's just taking a while to come together and get to the right final place and then and get it out, might this be a good time for us to sort of divide and conquer, maybe actually cre create some subcommittees where a subcommittee can be working on the listening sessions and another subcommittee could be working on um, doing some uh, academic or other research, contacting other communities and so forth so that we can be sort of working on things um, in tandem, um, uh, you know, per our availability uh, and interest. So I hear that better probably the end of January, right? That's sort of what I'm hearing. So we get out of the Christmas stuff and, and crazy party December. Is that correct what I'm hearing? I'm just stating that so Beth can take note of that. Is that correct? Okay, that's absolutely fine with me. Um, I think it's it's good. Um, just as a, as a, as a, as a uh, I know it's a little repetitive, but as, a, as an example, we had, with the Northampton Police Review Commission, we had two or three sessions, Cynthia, and each session was six hours, <laughs> and we got, and six hours because people came, right? So, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is doable, 100%. Um, 
in English and, and, and you know the, in the challenge being honest with you and candid with you guys for me the challenge is not bringing people the for me the challenge is to bring diverse people that's a challenge I don't think the, the, the challenge is to bring white people from Northampton. I mean, the challenge is to bring diverse people from Northampton, which is a challenge for every single thing, right? Including for people serving in committees, including everybody, right? So I think that, and, and I think that it's a good idea to divide and conquer, Jenna. I think it's a good idea. And so let me see. So we're going to move to the next item, which is it's right, a strategy to collect testimonies. So um, basically, that this section is about, OK, what do we do? Do we do we do individual outreach? As Jenna said, we do subcommittees so people can focus in one or two things at the, at the same time. And after that, they report back to the bigger group. Uh, but at the end of the day, all this is about collecting testimonies and listening to the community to know, to understand what's going on, right, in, in the practice. So um, if we are talking about having this, this listening session towards the end of January, how that looks for everybody's time. And if you tell me that you know, I would admire you for life because I don't even know what the hell I'm doing next week. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay, excellent. So Mara says it looks okay. I mean, I should be fine. I mean, you know, it's in the, it's going to be in the middle of the winter. There's not a lot to do. It's like hot chocolate, a movie, like traveling snow. Cynthia. Yeah, I think it would, uh, since we made this decision, I think it would be good to to talk or try to find out what we would do in the meantime. And just, a, you know, a couple of suggestions. Uh, we were going to have Court Klein here last time, um, but he couldn't make it this evening. And um, the mayor's assistant or staff, is, I'm not sure what his title is, but I'm just wondering if we can get the names of people who applied and didn't get the job. Um, and I just don't know how people feel about that. Um, also, I know um, uh, chairs are gonna be filling out the form, but I don't know if we wanna do a little one-on-one -on -one with certain chairs or see what, you know, have a conversation with them. Um, just trying to think how we're gonna use this time productively until January. Um. Yeah. Oh, so. and I'm sorry, Javier, one more thing. Um, uh, the city of Springfield is doing the exact same thing that we're doing, exact same thing. And they just released an ordinance. I sent it to Javier um, saying that it's kind of interesting. They have, they're pulling together their committee, um, same charge, but they had an ordinance that says the city is going to really focus on this and the city is going to you know, respond to applicants, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of an interesting first step. Um, so, um, and they're a much bigger city with a lot more diver diversity than we have. Um, but I happen to know the, you must know him too, Javier, the, uh, Jesse Lederman, the, who's the president of the city council there. Um, um, so I don't know, it could be, uh, we can get some information from them as well and see how their, how their path is going forward on this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, so let me sort of, let me go step by step, right? Um, yes, I mean, I, I, I agree, strongly agree with you that they has, there, there have to be simultaneous tracks doing outreach. No, the forum is not enough. Under no circumstances, the forum is enough. Uh, the forum requires internet the form requires time the form requires they just speak the language uh because I'm, I'm not translating the form um i willing to translate a flyer for and, and request interpretation on zoom to the city if if we have we know that people speaking different languages are going to come uh but yet i mean from the very beginning it's impossible 
to have a f the full picture without actually talking to people, right? What we're doing is that we are layering different ways how to be able to access those conversations, right? Uh, so that about that, right? Um, so we're working in something else with Jesse, um, who's Jesse Letterman, the city council president after Marcus William left uh, the seat. And, and you know, it's, it's Springfield has come after a turbulent development, right? I mean, uh, the, the creation, the, the legal battle between the Springfield city council and the mayor in relationship to the civilian overview commission of the police department. The ruling of the judge saying that the city council three four years ago had the authority to be able to create that to create that commission to the point that the city appeal and now was obliged to do it in the way how the mayor because at the end of the day the mayor was opposing a commission that he would have the ultimate power of appointing right and how the people being appointed there was some back and forth in some sort of a coverage that some people had businesses within with the city were providing business to the city right so it all the all what's happening right now in relation to establish a process and an evaluation and a full analysis about uh people serving in commissions in select boards across the city of springfield it's coming out of a sort of a reckoning moment with that process right with that being said um the, the the charter for the city of Springfield makes the city council a strong city council. Northampton has a strong mayor that has a weak city council, a strong mayor. Springfield has a, a strong city council and a strong mayor. So the, the Springfield city council can exercise as an actual legislative body while the the Northampton City Council doesn't have the same abilities than a full fledged legislative body in a city, right? And uh, and that shows in different things, but I'm not gonna go into details with that. But um, I think it would be good for maybe we're gonna invite Jesse to talk about it and the way how they are thinking to do it. I think that would have a lot of value. Um. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the on the on my to do list to have Jason Letterman coming to talk to us about sort of another thought process what they are looking for. Uh, Springfield is a community way more diverse, uh, you know, than than Northampton. I think that's that that we have a lot to learn, learn about from it. Uh, it's a community that you know knows the difference between affordable housing and low income housing. Uh, <laughs> to share. Um, thanks, Cynthia. Uh, so I think would be have a lot of value to 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 bring that expertise and that, that experience, right? Um, any thoughts about it? Cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of repeat what I said uh, two minutes ago. Uh, Jenna had her hand up. Jenna. Thank you. Um... So I think this summer I saw that Amherst had been, I, I don't, they don't have a city council, so they don't have a select committee, but they had some kind of group that was working on a similar issue. And I believe I read that Somerville has also worked on a similar issue. So I feel like some, some research and some outreach, not just to Springfield, but to these other communities that have been trying to tackle the same issue locally here in Massachusetts, but it's not like this is a, a problem specific to Northampton. Um, is probably a good thing. And so to Cynthia's point about, you know, what are we going to work on between now and January? I think really beefing up our outreach efforts to try to get people at that listening session is a really important um, avenue for energy and thinking about who are other groups that we should be talking to who might not necessarily come to a listening session, but might be interested in, you know, just having a conversation with one of us or recommending um, research or something like that. Um, I know Mara and I have. Um, I remember talking earlier in the summer about our academic backgrounds in this area and we might split off and do some more kind of academic research and so forth. So I think um, I think it'd be great to invite Jesse and maybe try to learn from these other communities and, and other um, experts 
as much as we can. And I don't, I don't see we need to wait on that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Anybody else? Gary, I feel that you want to say something, but my, my internet is being super wonky. Can y'all still see me? Can you hear yeah. me? Yes. Okay. Well, everyone else is frozen. Um, so first, I just want to say a lot. There's a lot of good work happening here, and I think that, as Jana said, dividing our efforts is going to be the way we conquer this. Um, we all have a limited amount of time, and by utilizing the spaces in between, we could be successful. And um, hopefully, at the end of this, we can kind of knock out just a few things. Because right now, I'm hearing uh, some research and, and outreach uh, to different communities. You know, that's one thing. Um, you know, I, another is planning this listening session. I'm wholeheartedly about that. I, I'll throw my hat in that ring. Um, but then I also see another part is is maybe a discussion with the chairs because just just sending out the forms, uh, you'll get some information. But I personally think I would like to see a couple chairs who are willing. You know, we can send out an invite and and get them in a room just to have a discussion because I don't. I'm uncertain if the chairs of different committees actually talk to one another. So maybe they're having issues that, uh, you know, they can come to some revelations as well by discussing how it, how it is to chair their committees. So I, I do see some relevance in that. Um, and that could be another avenue to pursue. Yeah, absolutely. And Okay, full disclosure, I, I do feel that they are layers of audience, right? And that the chairs are not necessarily besides besides the conversations, sort of the one-to-one -one conversations without expectation of reporting, plus the form, which is the way for them to be able to sort of to dig into it. And also because the chairs, you know, we can absolutely we can send and we can add a section at the end of the forum for chairs and co-chairs saying, if you want to come to one of the meetings, please let us know, right? Uh, but again, I, I keep thinking that I and I kept, keep feeling those are sort of the the audience that had the privilege to be able to do this, the time to answer this, to answer that. It's not that they don't have anything to say, and I think that the documents that Jaina, Cynthia, Wen created is going to encompass a lot of that if they have anything to say. And adding maybe at the end an invite for them to, you know, if you want to come in front of the, the committee, you're more than welcome to do it. But I honestly feel that even in those interactions, a one-to-one -one conversation uh, between a member and a chair without any expectation of reporting back, it's going to be more telling. I, it's a hunch that I have. Sort of, you know. <laughs> um, cool. So I, in, what I was going to say before, uh, and I want to restate it, everybody is still uh, invited and in highly encouraged to have those conversations to reach out to chairs, members, or whoever you think would give you a good conversation. Uh, you're not expected to report back. So nothing of what you are gonna be doing, it's part of subject to public record because you're not expected. But as I said in my example, it, this is the same as if Jim is walking down in the street and I go out and say, what the hell with, like there are craters in my street, which is true. Uh, my trees is full with like gigantic potholes. In that conversation, it's informative for Jim. It's something that he's gonna bring to the city council and to his work. But it's not. It's 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 just a conversation. He's not expected to, right? So that's the same kind of conversation that I would sort of uh, encourage the members to have, even more because, as you know, they are because of the advisory nature of the committees. They are committees that are professional in nature of their advice. And there are a vast amount of other committees that are not necessarily professional, but are just community oriented committees, right? And the different dynamic 
the different processes, it's drastically different, right? So, and I think recognizing that that different, it's it's one of the things that should make us um, looking for those conversations, right? So, Cynthia. Yeah, sorry, just a, a comment about the chairs. I think, um, um, as you pointed out, we'll see that full form um, shortly. And um, I'd be curious to know, I'm, I'm kind of on this chair thing um, um, only because I'd be, I'd be curious to see what the questions are that we're proposing to the chairs, because I think there's an opportunity for chairs to be more empowered, quite frankly. And um, I'm not sure they are empowered. And um, so I'd like to explore that. Um, and by empowered, I mean, um, if a particular chair says, I really want this particular person to meet my diversity goal, this is who I want, Are, is a chair empowered to influence that decision? And um, I don't even know if chairs know if they have that power or not, or if someone told them, hey, that's not your role. Um, so those kind of conversations, <laughs> I'm kind of interested in, in um, hearing from chairs. And um, I think the key with the survey is, if we don't get a big response from chairs, then we let loose, you know, whatever the human connection that we have with them one on one, and see what kind of what kind of data we can get um, in a conversation. So, just a thought. Thank, thank you, uh, Beth. I love your cat. <laughs> it's like it's just <laughs> guest appearance. Um, cool. Um, Um, time 8.30, let me see what we have. Cool. So, um, if we would have to ask right now, who would be interested in to be part of the group of the subcommittee? If, if we create a subcommittee, who would be interested to be part of that subcommittee that it's gonna sort of prep and do all the work for the January uh, listening session. You were breaking up, but you were saying who wants to work on the January listening session? Yes. Right? Okay, I will throw my hat into that. Um, and I have some ideas to uh, spread it as diverse as possible. You know, I, I have some connections that I think will work. So I'll, I'll put my hat on that. Ideally, we will have three people. Cynthia. Um, I'll volunteer, but I don't know if there's another subcommittee that I might be more interested in, but I'd love to work with you, Eric. Um, and I don't know what the, all that entails. So um, we'll just... Uh, We'll map it out and see what we can come up with. So I volunteer. Yeah. Any other taker? This is literal. The commitment is to Gary. Well, I was going to say, I, I think uh, Cynthia pointed out something very important is maybe we could list what the options are before we start selling them. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, if, if there is other subcommittee. But, but I, I would stick, I'm going to stick with this one. I'm going to stick with this one. But I might add another one, but I'm just definitely, I, I already <laughs> knew first off that I was ready for this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you know, the uh, the outreach for the event, so putting uh, the listening event together, um, whatever people want to do with data and see all their municipalities doing this. And... And after we get, hopefully, after we get all the answers, probably we're going to form a different group to sort of to go through the data, which would be after, like, specifically just to come out with sort of with a, sort of a short two page report about what the what the data coming from the form says, right. But that would be literally like two months depending how how we do with the with that so that would be like literally 
a two week that subcommittee would be like a two week thing since we said okay we got x amount so now we're going to take a look to it and we're going to sort of deep, that group would there are debriefing the bigger group about these are the findings of the form right that requires a week two weeks um cool so we would have the so we have the uh the listening session group and the group that wants would want to take a look to what other cities are doing so we do not reinvent the wheel is that correct yeah uh yes and i don't know if this gets combined with the what other cities are doing or just if that should be renamed like the research group but I think there's uh, a bunch of academic research and community research that could be happening. And I would be happy to participate in that and I'm gonna nominate Mara to join me. What do you mean for community research? I mean, what you're talking about, talking to the folks in Springfield, Amherst, Somerville, but also doing some academic research. I had emailed Javier to say that um, at a recent planning board meeting, we had a student come and observe the meeting. Um, and she said she was taking a class on public participation over at UMass. So I thought talking to her instructor would probably be an interesting endeavor. So I'm thinking about those kinds of where it's not Northampton residents, it's not necessarily the people we're trying to get to join our committees, but other people who, you know, uh, in their own ways, have some expertise or some skin in the game, um, wherever they are in their field or in their own community. So I guess I'm saying listening session, subcommittee, research subcommittee, and then maybe when the uh, information is back from the form uh, data subcommittee. That's fine with me. I mean, as somebody who I work with all these municipalities, I know what's going on. So uh, it's fine with me. So, um, cool. So for the first one, we have so far Cynthia and Garrick. Garrick, did you find the second one sexy enough for you to throw your hat into that one or no? No, I'm not, stick, not stick sexy enough. Some stay Excellent. true. Uh, but I do, but I do believe in research and facts, and science. <laughs> there is a, there is a, uh, isn't there like a long sign about that? Remember? We do believe in science. We believe it's, it's a beautiful answer. Um, cool. And the data-driven data group would be Mara and Jana. That's correct. Excellent. So um, I'm going to. Can I ask a procedural question? Yes. Is that enough to constitute a subcommittee? No, that's the reason why I was going to move mm. to a motion. Sorry to I wanna, preempt I, you. I don't want to. I don't want to move to a motion um, nominating people for something that they didn't want. So that's the reason why we did the. And that's the reason why Gary wanted to go first over all this. So nobody that doesn't want to be nominated is something to get into it. Okay. So, uh, but I want to make a motion to the creation of two subcommittees. Each subcommittee is going to have two members. Uh, with me and Jamila's floating members, but not, uh, no, 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 no. Ah, yes. Yeah. With me and Jamila's floating members. So in that way, it's only two are required for quorum, not three. Um, the first one is going to be the outreach, uh, to the listening session subcommittee. And that's going to be Cynthia and Carrick. And the other is that the driven subcommittee that is going to be Jenna and Mara and her cat. Looking for a second. Second. Beth? I'm sorry. <clears throat> sorry, who did the second? Was that Cynthia? Oh, Jamila, sorry. Uh, hold, on. Any, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Any I'm discussion? Sorry. Cynthia. Yeah, just under discussion, uh, clarification, um, if there's two people, I just want to make sure we do not have to schedule meetings, we can meet on our own. <laughs> That's a because really it's not a majority. Um, Work on our own, meet on our own, report back to the full group. 
Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, for one moment I, I misunderstood. Yes. <laughs> cool. Any other discussion? Excellent. Closing discussion. Uh, Beth. Javier. Yep. Jamila. Yes. Jana. Yes. Garrick. Yes. Mara. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. The years have it. Um, cool. So we're going to move to the last uh, agenda item, which is funny because timeline and next step came in every single of the previous uh, agenda uh, agenda items, right? So we're going to uh, we're going to request an extension that goes further than January, probably February. Um, and we talk about a little bit when the incision should be and when the final form should be out. Um, Jamila. Was possible compensation on the agenda? Was that on the not amended agenda? It is. Uh, I need to either learn how to read or change glasses. You're absolutely right. Yes. So the update to the possible compensation, let me, I have an email from uh, the city solicitor. Let me see. Jamila, do you have that email from Alan? I don't have it up right now. Okay, I'm gonna share. I'm going to share my screen for people to be able to, to see it. Oh, I just saw the Zoom chat and I, I, at the beginning, I thought that Jim bail on us, but no, he said hi, bye. Um, oh, where is it? Here it is. Can you see it? So, Harry and Jamila, I had been looking into this issue and it appears to me that in order to pay board members, we would need a state legislation amending the city's charter. The charter already contains provision regarding compensation for elected officials. After amended, uh, of, uh, amendment of the charter, the city council would need to pass ordinances implementing the charter change. There are several collateral issues to consider, including the potential need to treat all board members and employees as opposed uh, to volunteers with all that goes along with employee status. Board members will also potentially lose a special municipal employee status under the conflict of interest law, which would make the application of the COI status more stringent. Uh, please let me know if you need anything further on this issue. So after that, I had a phone conversation with Alan. Um, and, and at the end of the day, and you know, he phrased it pretty well. So that one of the issues is that Northampton just, it's coming out, this is like two years and a half after uh, the, the Charter Review Commission did their, 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 their uh, review of the Charter. And that was, was, the chair was Stan Moulton, who is now a, a, sitting, a sitting council member, right? So for in the opinion and again i'm gonna i'm gonna say it again in the opinion of the city solicitor uh, we we would the city would need to send something to a legislator asking for the approval on the change of the chart and after that if the legislator approved that they would come back and the city would have to codify it as as a new part of the charter through ordinances which is the municipal law right um the process of the city approving a change in the charter for municipalities is, is not is not enough that the municipality just sent the request and gets it right. There are several requests from the from Northampton and Amherst that had gone to the legislature and had not been granted. Uh, underage voting in municipal elections and uh, municipal ID, right? Those are a couple of things that went to the legislature and the legislature shut it down. Um, we, uh, in being honest with you, we need to do more research because we do know that Amherst pays uh, serving members uh, of, of uh, committees. 
but you know uh what work what functions in amherst with their own charter and the and the political structure that they have as a town compared with the political structure that northampton has it's complicated it's, it doesn't translate necessarily one to one and that's that's you know uh, not only because they have a town administrator, but also because their charter is absolutely totally different. Um, so we are going to keep sort of doing research on this, but I just want to be clear about this. And we talk about this with Jamila. Um, even if in some point we find uh, an entity or somebody who says, uh, an, somebody with an authoritative position saying, yes, you can do it with no problem. It's complicated because the city solicitor, it's, it's, it's sort of the official voice in the city. So you would need to convince the city council to say, you know, doesn't matter what the city solicitor says, we're going to do it anyway, because this, you know, this entity says that we can. And that's a t opens a Pandora box in so many levels. Uh, so we're going to keep doing research, but I, I just want to say that the opinion of the city solicitor is pretty clear on, on his, on his thoughts about it. So I'm going to open the floor for discussion. Cynthia. Yeah, I, I understand all that, but, um, we're a recommending body and, um, I don't want to lose this opportunity. And so at the very least, we recommend that this occur, but um, I don't know if research wants to take on this particular research aspect, but it's complicated. It's the windy, twisty sausage road of the Massachusetts legislator, legislature, but um, I just feel really strongly that this is gonna send a strong message that, that we're willing to compensate. And some of the compensation, uh, rules that some other nonprofit boards have is that you opt out of compensation if you don't feel that you need it. But if you feel you need it, you know, there's a process for that. So it isn't this, you know, like everyone gets all this money per meeting or anything like that. I just, I just would love to keep this front and center. Um, and it's really intimidating. I know what you're saying about city solicitor and the long road to get this done, but this is so important um, of, for, I think, for getting more people interested in serving. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, anybody else? Jenna. Uh, I looking at attorney Seawald's email, I can think of a couple of groups off the top of my head that if this were to go through, um, there would uh, be some groups who wouldn't either wouldn't be eligible to serve or wouldn't be eligible to be paid. So for example, somebody who lived in Northampton, but was on an H-1B visa, somebody who uh, potentially was undocumented and didn't have, a, um, you know, sufficient paperwork to be able to make it through the city payroll system and so forth. So I think as we're considering this, it's not a reason necessarily not to do it. Um, but it, to the same extent that I think it would open up the possibility for some individuals, it may also that option may block out some individuals or make it um, more challenging for them to join. So I just want to make sure that as we consider, continue to consider this, we, we think about those consequences as well. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, in the relation to undocumented people, you know, one of the things that was recommended, which is similar to what the city of San Francisco already have been doing for a couple of years, is it having undocumented folks being able to vote for school committee elections, right? And US law, federal law, states that that's possible. A non-citizen can vote as long as it's not a federal election, right? So, and that's one of the many sort of acts that Northampton has done and Amherst has done to the legislature and they, you know, had they had been uh, severely shutting down that request, right? So it's sort of, I think it's a good comment by Jenna that the ramifications of it, because it, 
I don't know how San Francisco is letting people vote because if somebody gets to vote undocumented when you're filing for a uh, judgment of status for citizenship, one of the questions is, have you revoted? And the answer yes is going to require a ton of documentation for that person. And if, if that person is not aware of the sort of the complexity of it and what and the amount of sort of documentation that is going to need provided, and because of that, it may be rejected, it's sort of something to look into it. Cool. Um, so we're going to keep looking into it. Uh, but again, I mean, there's sort of <laughs> a lot would need to happen even even if we find sort of a, a credible and authoritative opinion that that says that yes. Um, again, I mean, Jenna, if you and Mara can take a look if there is any uh, anywhere, any city that has been doing that or tried to do it and fell miserably. I think that would be interesting to know and to understand why they fell, why they succeeded. Um, that would be sort of interesting. And from the point of view that we, uh, so if, if this was done, we shouldn't sort of reinvent the wheel, but if it was tried and fail, it would be good to know why, right? Cool. Um, let me see, I lost the agenda. Ah, there is agenda. So is there any other comment in relationship to uh, sort of the compensation update? Cool. So we're going to move to the last one, which is timeline and next steps. Uh, I think we're ready to talk about timeline and we talk about next steps. Is there anything that we haven't touched in relation that needs to happen or how it's going to happen so far? I agree. So we have Cynthia. Uh, just a clarification. You mentioned that Javier for a one month extension. Um, is our, our reports due in January and you were talking about a one month extension? Did I hear you correctly? Um, I was so I wanted to wait until next meeting to bring out like a like a really last day. But yeah. what I throw was probably February which would be, you know, enough time after, because we talk about, we talk about the, the listening session being at the end of January. And if that listening section is successful, there is going to be need, there's going to be a need of a fair amount to use that as, you know, uh, into the report. It might, yeah, my point exactly. I mean, maybe Garrick and I are going to say we got to have three listening sessions. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to come up with. And uh, so, so I think February is ambitious. I mean, why not go for March? <laughs> what are they going to do? Fire us? <laughs> I don't think so. We're, we're not paid. <laughs> Noted. Oh, hold on, hold on. Jamila and Gary, cover your ears. We are unpaid. Anyway, so um, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. So one of the things that I would look for you guys in subcommittees is you know what you are gonna decide when you meet, when you do whatever you need to do. But what I would say is that um, in the next meeting, we should come out of that meeting with a solid request for extension, based in how you're seeing your subcommittees are doing and how it's doing the other, okay? Cool. Um, excellent. Um, is there any other, is there any new business that anybody wants to talk about or something that is not a part of the agenda that we would like to add in? We still have eight minutes left. Gary. I had a question. Is So is CoreCline, is, were we able to reschedule the people who were going to come for the last session so yeah so core came as you saw him and cynthia reached out to him and core is it's uh it's unable to attend this time so we are still going to try to reschedule him um and that's what i just want to confirm because court sent me 
pretty much what he thought we needed, but, um, and it's the boilerplate that's on the um, city website as to how boards and commissions function. So um, I, I think we might wanna ask him some more questions, but that's up to us. And so I'm happy to invite him to the next meeting. If I could just get a confirmation of what that is. He was ill, so. Yeah, what about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add him in the meantime to the draft for the next meeting. Okay. And that okay. date, just to confirm everybody on everyone's. Uh, let me see. So that would be the 25. Perfect. I'll, uh, I'll extend an invitation, if that sounds good. Perfect. I appreciate that. Um, any other new business that is not listed in the agenda and can we address here? No? Perfect. Oh, long day for everybody. So uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Looking for a second. I second. <laughs> tie. It's a tie. Cool. Beth? Javier? Yep. Jamila? Yes. Anna? Yes. Garrick? Yes. Mara? Yes. And Cynthia? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, thank